Are you ready to stop the self-sabotage and create the life you desire? Well, in order for that to happen, you need to break free from the bad beliefs that are holding your success hostage. You need to optimize the stress by turning it into extra energy for success. And those hurtful habits? Well, we need to give that pain a purpose for progress. Welcome to Stop the Self-Sabotage and Create the Life You Desire podcast. Are you kidding me? I'm helping them out. Uh, I'm allowing you to destroy my backyard, cut down some very mature trees that added to the beauty of the landscape and put in these two ugly drains in my backyard. Not because my yard is flooding, but because the neighbor next to me, their yard is flooding. And it's because whenever they added on to the back of their house, it wasn't graded. So none of this is my fault. I helped you out, though. I allowed you to tear up my backyard and insert these ugly drains. And now that the drains are malfunctioning and holding water and have turned my backyard into a mosquito fest, you're telling me there's nothing you can do for me. This is a conversation I had recently with the city that I live in. And it was very easy for me to slip back into my old identity of being a victim. Of, of saying, oh, look at how I had to sacrifice for my neighbors. How I had to be the one to save them. And because of my dysfunctional need to be appreciated for everything I've done, I am going to suffer the consequences when it didn't work out. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Yeah, but you know what? It is easy for us to slip back into that old conditioning, isn't it? That's what we're talking about today how our dysfunctional need for appreciation can lead us to sacrifice ourselves for others, save others when they don't necessarily need it, all at the expense of ourself. And when we slip into that previous conditioning, what happens is we then cut off the ability to be the leader that we really are. Now, how did all this happen? Oh, wait, I'm supposed to tell you, if you're new to my world, who I am. Dawn Ferguson, I am a certified hypnotist, a certified instructor, and a rapid results coach. Woohoo, I have initials behind my name. What it means is that I know how to take you from where you are to where you want to be as quick as possible because my expertise, my specialty is the parts of your personality that have been conditioned and programmed for pain. But now we're going to give that pain a purpose that is going to upgrade the quality of your life. Okay. So we're talking about fear number six. There are six major fears. This one happens to come in at the end of the list, but it can do just as much damage as all the others. And that is the fear of not being liked. A lot of times it starts with our peer group, but it manifests with the peer group because we were conditioned or primed to experience it by an authority figure in our life. I'll give you an example. Um, My mom, oh, such a beautiful, accepting woman of others. But she was also conditioned to take uh, care of others. She was only three whenever her mom became very ill. They were in the military. And she talks about being three years old and learning to climb the step stool to wash the dishes every night after dinner. Three years old ironing her father's uniforms. He was in the military. A three-year-old learned how to become a parent in a household that was dysfunctional. What do you think she passed on to me? Yeah, that I needed to hold myself back and take care of others the same way she did. 
So it's not your fault that you've been conditioned for this, but you must take 100% responsibility for upgrading it. So you're primed to have it by an authority figure in your life. Then from there, it's it fully blooms and blossoms with your peer group, with the kids you hung around with. Because you couldn't be who you were. You had already been primed. You had to hold yourself back and make life okay for others. So you were incongruent with your own identity. And so this cut off your development of self and it turned you into a chameleon that could change colors with wherever you were to make life okay for others. So you had a fear of not being liked. And if you weren't liked, you were going to be cut off from the very thing that you were conditioned to crave, which was validation by taking care of others. So then this led to the dysfunctional need of being appreciated, maladapting, seeking approval, seeking approval by saying, This is how I have to sacrifice myself. I'll hold myself back and and what I want to have in life to make it okay for you. Or I'll save you. The unfortunate thing about when we save someone else and we take on responsibility for their focus, for their feelings, and for their actions, is there's no transfer of authority. There is no transfer of power. Just like whenever my backyard turned into a mosquito fest and the city comes out and goes, yep, a whole lot we can do about that. And I went, oh, we have a moment of excellence. And I reached out everybody that had a power position that could potentially help me. And I'm like, we have a moment where you can step into magnificence. We can partner on this for excellence. So I'm going to rely on you and what you're the very best at. And you can tell me how we can make a significant upgrade in this. I didn't ask to be saved. Because here's the thing, when you go in and you save somebody, They get aggravated and irritated after a while because they're never empowered to make the difference for themselves. And they will eventually turn on you, the very person who's trying to make their life better. But because you're never empowering them, they'll turn on you and begin to see you as the problem. Because you are. Because you're constantly trying to save themselves from themselves or from the fallout that you're afraid you're going to experience because their life is going bad instead of taking 100% responsibility for who you are and the environment that you've placed yourself in. We'll talk about that in just a little bit, that you have got the levels of leadership that will take you so beyond what you're experiencing, but it doesn't have have the environment to grow because there's something else in that place right now, which is the dysfunctional part of your personality that was conditioned to be a chameleon and make it okay for others. Okay. So you couldn't develop yourself when you have the need to be appreciated. So you have to maladapt, seek approval for what you're doing for others. And then what's going to happen is that you won't be appreciated you will actually be vilified. And then you feel like everything is piling on on top of you in the universe. You're doing everything right. Why can't anything work out? That's because subconsciously you're programmed to find the people, places, and things that are going to take advantage of you. That are either going to need you to sacrifice or save yourself. Or save them, excuse me at which point will lead you to try to save yourself because you're going to get in so over your head. You'll, you'll find the people, places, and things that will screw you up without even realizing it. It's known as a subconscious scotoma. It simply means a blind spot that you're not recognizing what's going on. You are actually creating an environment for these things to come in and work against you because that's your conditioning. How do you know if this might be you? You'll back away from praise. 
Uh, you won't ask for help. Oh, no. Uh, others won't cooperate long term with you. What you're doing is not sustainable. Uh, you're petrified to make a mistake. Oh my gosh, I so get that. Because it's not just for you. It is everybody that you're having to take care of that is relying on you to get this right. And if you make one false move, oh, everything's going to come crashing down on top of you because you continue to sacrifice and save. And you get emotionally flooded, but you can't always put your finger on what those emotions are. You, you, you can't recognize them because there's so many of them. And you feel if you only help enough others that they'll see that, that you truly are deserving and maybe they'll throw you some scraps. Here's the thing. Dysfunctional givers attract dysfunctional takers. You are not going to attract the other leaders. Okay, so what do you need to do? You need to be looking at upgrading into recogni recognition. Recognition is very functional. I am going to give you four steps on this. And we're going to wrap up with those. But I'm going to let you know that I can assist you with a shortcut on this. It's so what's known as the four R's, reveal, release, relearn, rejoice. It is a trademark process that I developed as a certified hypnotist and instructor. Just like we were in school, we had reading, writing, arithmetic, and recess. Well, this is reveal, release, relearn, rejoice. In a hypnotic state, when your very powerful part of your mind that is responsible for your conditioning and programming is open to suggestions to move further, faster. We bring out the part of you, the younger part of you, that has been conditioned and programmed around the fear of not being liked, the need to be appreciated, sacrificing and saving others. We actually have a conversation with this aspect of your personality. That is the reveal. And then we move into release. We look at what caused it to experience this in life and we release it from having to continue to find any more people, places, or things that are going to trigger you showing up dysfunctionally. But that's not enough because the subconscious mind that we're working with will not tolerate a void or a vacuum. You take something out that is dysfunctional or painful in nature without choosing its replacement. It will find something else for you and it'll put into place something like what you just took out. So you're going to trade one dysfunction for another. Oh, yeah, no. So instead, we have to move into step three, relearn. See, this younger part of you that learned to be the chameleon actually has beautiful colors, beautiful colors of leadership to step out and to say, this is how you live life. This is how you recognize true power and authority, not by what I say, but by what I do. So you allow this younger you to utilize your brilliance. You know, the very thing that you were told you had to hold back from showing so you can make life okay for someone else. Now we're going to bring it out. But the law of polarity says everything's created as a whole, which means we have this younger you that had pain. Well, that means on the other side is that we have the wise you that holds progress and purpose. So inner advisor, higher self, soul self. What it is, is the part of you that did not have the environment to take root and grow mature into your potential. If I were to take an acorn and put it on my desk, oh, it's going to be really cool to look at as a reminder of what we can grow into. But itself, it's never going to be able to realize its potential because it's not in the correct environment. The same way with you, with your wise self. 
is because it didn't have the environment to be able to grow because that was taken up by the younger part of you continuing try to save and sacrifice. Well, now that younger you has an upgraded purpose in your life. So now the wise you can take that pain and turn it into progress by giving it meaning. So we've done reveal, release, relearn, and now we move into rejoice. The person who has the most intimate, high quality relationship with the three aspects of themselves, their painful past, who they are in the present, and the potential of their leadership self. The person who is able to bring all of those together as a team is the one that we admire for showing us how life can really be lived. And that's the rejoice, bringing all pieces of you together to form the picture of who you really are, not what someone else needed you to be. Okay. All of this is done in a hypnotic state, in a hypnotic session. I take you through this process. Now, if that is something that it sounds like you'd like to explore, let me tell you about a bonus. Later on this summer, I'm going to be doing a class, Mission, Vision, Purpose, and Path. The levels of leadership that it's time for you to step into. The only way you can get access to this class is if you've previously worked with me. Because I do not have time to try to take you through these four stages and then teach you in the class. This is advanced. This is for people who know that they're ready to live a life of purpose, not just for themselves, but how it's going to benefit their their household, their community, the world. So the only way you can get access to that is by having worked with me previously. You will get it at a very easy to do investment. Unless you're one of my VIP clients, I'll tell you about that in just a moment. Okay, so if you want to explore more that maybe should we be working together or not, I want you to text the word consult and my name Dawn to 636-699-7791. You can text consult and one of my associates that I have personally trained will reach out to assist you. But if you want to work with me, the one that has developed these systems to bring you out at your very best, if you want to work with me personally, you have to put my name in that text. Or you can call 636-699-7791 and leave a message that you would like for me to get back to you. All right. So, Access to the Mission, Vision, Purpose Path class, the levels of leadership revealing who you really are is available to you, to you if you've worked with me in private session or if you have decided that you want to do what I do for others. That's the level of leadership you want to step into. You want to become a certified hypnotist and learn how to take someone through the four R's themselves. Yeah, you want to be the one that is embodying the, not just the pain that has a purpose, but turning dreams into reality. That might be you. Go to isch4u.com. Check out the course there. And then if you decide to work with me this summer, either in the summer group class or privately, I privately train you. You will get access to the Mission, Vision, Purpose Path as a bonus to your CH certification. All right. So I said we were going to wrap up with your plan of action. Step number one, you need to decide what you value about yourself. What do you recognize in yourself as far as what are you magnificent at? Step number two, you need to get clear that once you start living that value, how it will manifest itself in people, places, and things showing up to assist you because you're really clear on how things are going to show up to hold you back right now. Now you need to start looking for what's going to help you move forward. Step number three, 
You need to draw boundaries, not with others, but with yourself. What you're going to do when you go into that pity party of pain, when you feel like you're being triggered. So what are the boundaries? And then how are you going to take that trigger and turn it around to where it is a step into success? And step number four, you need to take full responsibility for moving forward. Yes, there are things that are going to happen that are going to be unfair in life. You need to take 100% responsibility for finding the other leaders where you're going to bring out a level of magnificence in each other. Thank you so much for allowing me to serve you. And I look forward in helping to reveal your brilliance.